dear respected elders and honorable brothers last week we discussed few more miracles of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam some of which we will discuss this week and hopefully by next week we can wrap up and then start with the preparations of ramadan and the vol- the miracles of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as we mentioned last week ibn arabi says that it's more than a thousand these volumes and chapters upon chapters have been written on the miracles of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam indeed if we look at it the entire life of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam itself was a miracle everything he done was absolutely to the point and was apt and perfected in every form rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says adabani rabbi fa ahsana ta'dibi that it was my lord who has given me such qualities and he has nurtured me in such a way that he has perfected me in every way fa ahsana ta'dibi he has done a great job in nurturing me one of the names of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam we say an nabiyul ummi we generally we translate it as the unlettered prophet just this morning i was speaking to the brothers i said this translation is wrong unlettered doesn't give the meaning of ummi ummi means that someone who did not learn from a human but he learned from a divine source he is above us that is why ummi is used in the praise of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam if we do not use unlettered in the praise of someone if we say this guy is unlettered he only went to grade 4 i went to grade 4 in school after i didn't go <laughs> just now the other boys get ideas they be like this guy is unlettered he doesn't know good english some some people they see you know the talks and we like want to improve your english please we need to improve our iman improve our salah all that is secondary so unlettered doesn't fit with the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam ummi fits because ummi means someone who did not learn from a human being but he learned from a divine source and that is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is what allah taala is saying uh, that is what rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is saying adabani rabbi fa ahsana ta'dibi when jibril alayhi salam came and told the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam yaqra he said ma ana bi qari'in i cannot read and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started teaching rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam formally and before prior to nubuwwat allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was protecting the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in every way he had a clean slate on his character Today if we have to look at our past and people have thousand things to point at our character but no one had anything to point at the character of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam whether he was a young boy whether he was a teenager whether he was a businessman whether he was a husband whether he was a leader whether he was someone who kept people's trust amana respect honor dignity in every way no one could point a finger at muhammad he said muhammad he is the most praise praiseworthy in our community that is why the grandfather of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam named him muhammad he said liyuhmad bihi wa samaytuhu muhammad liyuhmad bihi fil alamin that i have given the name of my grandson muhammad so that he may be praised throughout the world and it is mentioned that no one else was given this name prior to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam allah taala inspired this name on the heart of the grand father of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the same mention is mentioned of hasan and husain hasan the name hasan and husain was given to no one else prior to the grandsons of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that is why sometimes when parents ask we want to give a unique name is is natural everyone you know wants the best for the child when you giving a unique name there's two things you need to consider number one that personality needs to be unique in the past and number two is that you giving a unique name make sure the meaning is also unique and is a good meaning sometimes we look for it must sound fancy we do not care what the meaning is and then later on the child suffers throughout his life when he realizes the meaning is something wrong 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all the understanding. Coming back to the miracles of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We know Isa alayhi salam, he says, One of the miracles that Allah ta'ala granted Isa alayhi salam, which Isa alayhi salam spoke about. And Isa alayhi salam felt the honor that Allah ta'ala had given him that he could cure the sick. The sick people would go to Isa alayhi salam and he would, he would cure them. A person who is suffering with leprosy, Isa alayhi salam would pass his hand and his skin would be cured. A person who is blind, Isa alayhi salam would pass his hand and he would start seeing. These miracles Allah ta'ala had granted to the, to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam as well. It is mentioned of Ali radiallahu anhu at the occasion of Khaybar. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam announced tomorrow I will give the flag to someone who I love and Allah loves. Tomorrow I will give this flag to someone the leadership of this campaign to someone who I love and Allah loves. Umar radiallahu anhu said that that night every Sahaba did not worry about someone else. They, they wanted to be in the forefront. Why? Because the glad tiding is that, that Allah loves you and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam loves you. And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam gave the flag to Ali radiallahu anhu. Prior to that Ali radiallahu anhu, his eyes were hurting so much so that he could not see. It is mentioned that he, he needed the help of one person to come to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He could not even see the road, the path. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam asked, Oh Ali, what is wrong? Ali radiallahu anhu said that my eyes are hurting and I cannot see anything. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam passed his hands over the eyes of Ali radiallahu anhu. It is mentioned from then he never ha his eyes never ached again. This was the miracle of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. On another occasion, one Sahabi came to the Prophet ﷺ and he said, O oh Prophet of Allah, I am blind. I cannot see. And I wish that you make dua for me that my eyesight be cured. The Prophet ﷺ said, I give you two options. One is that you endure this with patience. This calamity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed upon you, you enjoy it with patience. It may be better for you, meaning your ranks will raise in akhirah. Or secondly, is I make dua for you and you are cured. He said, O oh Prophet of Allah, make dua for me so that I may be cured. The Prophet ﷺ told him, perform wudu. Then perform four rakats or two rakats of salah. And thereafter make this dua that, O oh Allah, cure me through the blessings of Muhammad ﷺ. This narration is in Tirmidhi. Just now someone says that, again, we're bringing other narration. This is in Tirmidhi, this narration. Cure me through the blessings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sahaba said, the man who we saw that could not see in the morning, before we left that gathering, he was normal with us. He could see us and we could see him. This was the miracle of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Just being in the presence of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. On one occasion, it is mentioned of Salma bin Akwa, also in the incident of Khaybar. Salma bin Akwa was roughly 13 to 14 years old. And he says, a sword struck me on my shin, that it wounded my leg, I could not walk anymore. I went to the Prophet wasallam. the Prophet wasallam took his saliva and rubbed it on my shin, and thereafter, there was no pain anymore. I was walking as if nothing had happened to my leg. However, the scar remained, and it was as if someone had just operated on me right now. This was Salma bin Akwa. In the occasion of Hunayn, Khalid bin Walid radiallahu anhu says, I also had a sword that hit my shin. And those of us that get hurt on your shin, sometimes when you hit a rock or you hit a bench or something, you know how painful it is. So he said, I had a sword that hit my shin, I could not walk anymore. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa after the battle came looking for me. Imagine what a honor. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is looking for who? Khalid bin Walid. He found me resting against my saddle. And he said, oh Khalid, what has happened to you? I said, oh Prophet of Allah, my shin is hurt, I cannot walk. The Prophet ﷺ passed his hand on my shin and instantly I was cured. This was the miracle that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Which other Anbiya alayhi wa sallam, Allah ta'ala gave them those miracles. It was distinct to, every miracle was distinct to a certain Nabi. But all those miracles were given to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as Khatamun Nabiyyin. One occasion... One woman comes to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he says, O Nabi of Allah, at, the, at Hajjatul Wada, the final Hajj, O Nabi of Allah, my son 
cannot speak since he was born, meaning he is dumb, he cannot talk. The Prophet wasallam asked for some water, recited something on it, blew into, this, into the water and he said, give this water to your son to drink. And this water was given, the Prophet wasallam said, sprinkle this water on the face of your son until this water is, inshallah, he will, he will start speaking and talking. It is mentioned it has not been that the Prophet ﷺ had left that area and the son started speaking and talking. This was the miracle of Rasulullah ﷺ. And Sahaba witnessed day in and day out, again and again, they witnessed many, many, many miracles. One of the miracles of the Prophet ﷺ was that when he, would, when he would touch someone with affection and compassion, <laughs> that person life would turn into the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is mentioned of Fudala radiallahu anhu. Fudala, he says that I was a staunch enemy of Islam and the Muslims. And when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came for Hajj, I decided to assassinate the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So I hid my dagger and I walked into the haram. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was making tawaf of the Kaaba. When the Prophet وسلم, while he was making tawaf, he spotted me and he held me and he said, Oh Fudala, what are you thinking about? What are you thinking about? Fudala said, La shay, I'm not thinking of anything. Yeah. So the Prophet وسلم, said, Istaghfirillah, that why don't you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness that you have evil intentions? And your evil intentions, I, I know about it. So Fudala says, I could not hide myself in front of the Prophet ﷺ. So the Prophet ﷺ hit his hand on my chest and told, told me that, Oh Fudala, repent from your sins that you, are, that, you are, that you have come to commit. Fudala says, it was just that touching of the Prophet ﷺ's hand on my chest and all evil intentions had vanished. And Prior to coming to the Prophet, coming towards the Prophet he was the greatest enemy in my eyes. When I, when I was in the presence of the Prophet when his hand touched me, he became the most beloved person in my eyes. Thereafter, when I returned, he said there was a woman that I was talking to, and I used to have connections and relations with her. So she was on the street, and she said, "Oh, Fudala, come, let's have a chat, let's have a talk." Today, all our youngsters are, are grabbed into these things. We all online, somewhere and somewhere, we get stuck. So what did Fudala say? That no, no, no. I have come from the company of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Qalat halumma ila al-hadith. Faqultu la, ya aba alayki Allah wal islamu. Law ra'ayti muhammadan wa qabilahu. That have you not seen Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Have you not seen his army that have just marched in Mecca? If you had seen them, how they were breaking the idols in the haram when the Prophet وسلم, this is also one miracle of the Prophet the 360 idols that was in the haram when the Prophet وسلم, conquered Mecca he walked into them, he just pointed at them and they fell all those idols had fallen to the ground by pointing at each idol while the Prophet وسلم, was making tawaf each idol fell onto the ground so he tells her that have you not seen Muhammad وسلم, and his people as they have walked into Mecca how they have broken all these idols and now it has illuminated to me that Islam is the true light and Islam is my path I cannot be in relation in con contact with you anymore even if we can take this one message this one message that who are we following in our lives what are we running behind let us see around us uh, how many people janazas upon janazas we hear daily messages upon messages but have we committed ourselves to the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Are we just listening for the sake of entertainment? Are we just reading the miracles for the sake of entertainment? Oh, he was a good man, he was a brilliant man, but it's very difficult for me to follow. No, no, no. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حسنة. That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the perfect example for you. Today we want to follow the greatest businessman, the one who makes millions, we want to follow him. The one who, who can kick the ball in such a way that he will win, you know, win the cup or win the trophy or win the league, we want to follow him. I'm not saying don't follow him in kicking the ball. Learn how to kick the ball from him. But why do you want to cut your hair like him? Why do you want to dress like him? 
Why do you want to drive the car like him? Why do you want to walk like him? Why do you want to talk like him? For that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a perfect example, a perfect role model, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There are many more miracles. Every week my time runs short. Inshallah, next week we will try and wrap up with a few more miracles of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.